If you're looking for a saw to slab some rocks, I'm going to show you how I set my wet tile saw up and it worked great. You may have seen my video on digging flint ridge flint. Well, in this video, I'm going to be taking some of those chunks of flint and slabbing them on this wet tile saw, and then I'm going to heat treat some of them towards the end of the video. Here's one of the chunks that I dug. It's three and a half inches thick, seven inches long, and it took two and a half minutes to cut through that and make a slab, which I thought was really good considering how hard flint is. When it comes to slabbing rocks, there's two main choices of saws, a lapidary saw or a wet tile saw. Lapidary saws are more expensive, and since I'm not gonna use it all that often, I chose to go the wet tile saw route. And I'm really glad I did because its performance really surprised me. It cut through the rock a lot quicker than I thought it would. I bought this 10 inch diamondback wet tile saw from Harbor Freight. And by design, it has a tray that holds the water and you would put the water pump in that tray to keep your blade wet. The rock dust from the rocks that you're cutting gets, ends up getting in the water. And over time that may clog up your pump. So I chose to drop my pump into a five gallon bucket of water and I put a drain hose on this tray. I can run it out in my driveway and let the water just drain away. And every several runs, I'll refill the bucket so it always has fresh water. That way it's, I'm keeping the pump clean. It's not sucking rock debris back through the pump. Um, may never have a problem, but I didn't want to take the chance. The modifications I made to the tray to accommodate slab cutting was adding some bolts. The purpose of the bolts was to hold some stop blocks and a bracket to keep your rock stable. The end here will hold the stop block on the end and then to set the slab thickness, I have another board that I can drop down here, block it down with a couple of wing nuts and now it gives me a stop block and a block that sets the thickness and this will be placed depending on how thick of a slab you want. You, you figure that out and lock that board down where you want it for the thickness. Now with those two stop blocks, I can simply place my slab in there and to hold the slab down, I welded up this little one inch steel bar bracket and I can put it down on there, throw some nuts on those bolts. That will hold that rock in place and it will not move. I can just simply run the tray back and forth, running this saw up and over back and forth until it cuts through it. This biggest piece here that I cut was two and a half minutes to cut a slab. Enough yakking about the saw, let's get busy and start cutting some rock. I'm gonna show you a couple clips, but I'm not gonna show you the entire clip because you'll get bored sitting there watching it for two, two and a half minutes while I cut through a rock. I'm gonna cut the middle section out, just show you the beginning and the end, and then I'll show on the screen actually how long it took to cut that slab. So let's get to it. I stuck a little piece of wood as a shin up under the rock to kind of keep it flush against my stop board so that my slab will be uniform thickness. This material is Flint Ridge Flint from about a farm about 30 miles east of Columbus, Ohio. And it's pretty hard material and this all really eats through it quick. Another real colorful piece. This is a real pretty piece here. See some quartz crystals in it. So we'll cut another slice off. Hopefully we'll get one as pretty as that one. Yeah. 
that's a beautiful piece there. You don't see the hole through the crystals like you did on that other one, but it's got some real pretty material. Here's all the pieces that I slabbed up. I've already gone through and pulled out a couple of pieces from 18 different rocks that I cut. And one of them will be on the heat treating tray. The other one will be a control piece so that we can see if there's any color change in it. Some of these I left a big chunk of rock. I just wanted to cut a few slabs. The other ones I slabbed up most of the rock. If I find some that are real pretty, I can go back and cut the rest of it. See that one's got some pretty color to it. So I may end up slabbing some more off of that piece there. Cause it's got some really neat coloring in it. But I just wanted to get through them, see what I had to work with, and get some laid out so I can start heat treating it. And I'll show you a clip here now of the control set and the set that's going to get heat treated. So you can kind of see what I'm working with, and then you'll be able to see if there's a difference in them after they're here heat treated. Here are the treated. slabs I pulled from that pile of slabs you saw earlier in the video. The 18 over here, I'm going to heat treat. And this is a matching set of 18 that I want to use as a control set so I can kind of compare the two to see the color change. This flint, just like Arrowheads, the color really pops when you get it wet. Like see this one here. If I spray it, you really see the color come out in these pieces. I'm hoping to see some good color change in these once I heat treat them. So we're gonna put them in the small oven and give it a try and see what happens. Here's the first group of rocks that I pulled out from heat treating. The one on the left is heat treated, the one on the right is the control rock. As you'll notice, most of them have gained somewhat of a pink to reddish hue to them. That one right there made a big change from kind of a yellow to a pinkish red. That one did as well, just like that one there made a big change. I guess a lot of the rocks turning red, it kind of lines up with the sandstone that they used around their fire pits because a fire rock will go from brown to a reddish black color after it's been around a fire pit for a while. Here's the next set. Again, on the left is heat treated, on the right is not heat treated. The first one there doesn't show a big change. The second one, third one, fourth one, you're seeing more of a pinkish reddish hue to them which is pretty much the common theme I'm seeing across them, either no change or kind of a pinkish red color change. Here's the final set, and it's similar to the other ones. The one on the left is heat treated. The yellowish rocks turned more of a pink. That gray one there really didn't change. So it's similar to the results I saw in the other two sets. The heat treatment I used was 250 degrees for two hours. Then I went to 300 for an hour, 350 for an hour, 400 for an hour, and 450 for four hours. And that's how I got these results. I believe that's all I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to end up polishing some of these pieces of Flint Ridge Flint, but that takes a while to polish them. So if I do a video on it, it'll be in another one. I'm going to wrap this video up, keep it from being too long. Thanks for watching, folks. If you like the video, please like and subscribe.